Hello and welcome to Clearview News Desk. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city. I am Gloria Atab. Popular Nigerian singer Timaya has disclosed that he can't date a Nigerian woman because the relationship would be too toxic. The singer went on to liken a relationship with a Nigerian woman to the game called Police and Thief. The singer appeared as a guest on the recent episode of The Morning Rush on a radio station where he asserted that Nigerian women are not his spec when it comes to relationships. Timaya shared his unfiltered perspective on love, emphasizing the significance of understanding personal preferences in romantic relationships. Reactions both on and off social media have continued to trail the Super Eagles' performance in the just-concluded 2023 CAF African Cup of Nations tournament after losing 2-1 to one to the Elephants of Ivory Coast, the host nation, in a tense and highly anticipated final match. Clearview News presents this commentary on Sunday's outing and what many Nigerians have to say. Following the Super Eagles 2-1 loss against hosts Ivory Coast in the final of the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations, Nigerians have faulted the team for reserving their worst performance for the most important game, despite raising hopes with their run during the tournament. After Captain William Troost Ekong gave Nigeria a lead into the break with a header in the 37th minute, the hosts fought back in the second half, producing two Two goals, courtesy Frank Kessie and Sebastian Haller, to win their third title. Kessie found the equalizer for the Elephants in the 61st minute with a header, while Haller, who played for West Ham United 2019 to 2021, Ajax 2021 to 2022, and currently Borussia Dortmund, known for his elite finishing pace and strength scored the winner and his second goal of the tournament with a poke in between Nigerian defenders. A soft touch from brilliant flicked finish from Simon Andraga with nine minutes left to play. Despite the final changes made by coach Jose Pesero, the Eagles couldn't find the inspiration to come back into the game, missing the chance to win a fourth AFCON just like their failures in 1984, 1988, 1990, and 2000. Across different stadiums and viewing centers observed by Clevview News Desk crew, the once lively and cheerful environment following the Super Eagles' first win soon turned dense and the silence deafening even before the final whistle sounded on Nigeria's 2-1 defeat. Despite the loss, some citizens appreciated the Eagles for their outing, while others showed their disappointment in the players and the team's coach. In this game today, the only thing that favored Nigeria was our tactical prowess. The crowd was against us. The officiating has been against us, there's no doubt about it. The environment was against us. Even our own people down there were also against us. Where were we? How many seats? How many tickets available? Where were we? Where is Nigeria embassy in Cote d'Ivoire? In one month plus, we don't know them. Then Pesero choose to twist the starting line that has been working for him today. This is a game you know very well. The last time we played them in this same tournament, we won 1-0. Know that we played well. They played the game, they dominated the game. We had a penalty, we converted it, that was it. We knew very well. In this tournament, we've been doing one thing. We play from the back, we use our full back, we connect our wingers. Our midfield has not been that excellent. So if you know that our key in this tournament has been online, no? Kevin Bassi, Moses Simon, Admola Lukman, and, Mos and, the, and the, uh, Victor Moses, why dropping Moses Simon today on the bench? If we are to talk physicality, experience, finishing, where does Chukwesi? Where does Chukwesi match Moses Simon? It's like the destiny was in the hand to win this tournament. Judging by how they qualify from the group and they came here, you knew very well that today the only thing you needed to do was to do the right thing, play your best players. The Super Eagle that beat them in the group stage is better. It's worse than the one that they defeated today. But what did we do? We got it wrong. We can't just continue like this. 
we, we, have a very, we have a very nice team. Before Senegal win this one, they, they lost the final before they came and win the last one last two years. So as long as I'm concerned, we had a very good tournament. Though we've lost, it's a tournament one, some, somebody must win. We came all the way from Nigeria to Cote d'Ivoire, we played on beating to the last day, then we lost 2-1. It's not a bad result. But NFF should look into this team, do the needful, then we move. My final thought is, Pesero, I think this is the first AFCON final. Today you have learned that there are days you don't experiment. There are days you can't afford to make mistakes. When you are, to me, we are unlucky to play against the host nation. Everything worked against us. The crowd worked against us. Everything worked against us. But you refuse to stick to that which has worked for you. And that was your greatest undoing today. But you've tried. You've tried. This is your first half come with Nigerians and you got this far. Congratulations to you, Pesero, but you have to work on your mistakes. If you should be over 10, I'll read, I'll read to 7. Because the first um, goal that we scored, that was because of the corner kick. And after we scored that other one, we just relaxed. If, like, based on what I saw in the match, in the possessions, they were higher. They were higher. They were getting like 70. They were having like 70%, and we have like 30% possession. So since we scored the other one, we were just like relaxed. We were not like, we were not even hitting the close goals. They, tr they had like 12 shots that they tried. Us, we just had like, we had like three. It was not that much. So I won't rate it that much. And the midfielders that they added there, they were not, they're not strong enough. They're just weak. They're not able to. Um, carry out what they are supposed to do. They didn't put people and and at the end of the match, closing um, um, almost at the end to the finishing of the match, they now said substituting people instead of because when I was um, looking at the Ivory Coast, they substituted people like close to the end. It was like about maybe 60 percent, um, 60 minutes to the end. But also were substituting 70 minutes, 80 minutes when the match was about to be over. So the people that they substituted really, they did not have enough chance to like fight for their own country i think they did their best like they tried but then there was a time they were getting weak like they were all getting tired like they were feeling very very relaxed so i think when they scored the one goal like there was this confidence in them maybe like they will just win the match so getting close to the end of the match they were all tired like even the keeper was just left to himself and then i think that was it that was the major cause we lose the game President Bola Tinubu, in a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngelali, praised the Super Eagles for their display in the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations final in Ivory Coast, noting that despite their loss to the host nation, they demonstrated resilience and talent at the tournament. Vice President Kashim Shatima, former Senate President Dr. Abubakar Saraki, and so many other serving rep members have hailed the Super eagles for their doggedness all through the game. It was indeed a fairy tale and a transition from lucky survivors to eventual winners for Ivory Coast as they were crowned winners of the 2023 Total Energy Scarf Africa Cup of Nations. While chants of joy and celebration remain loud on Ivorian soil till this very moment, many Nigerians, with bated breaths, remain hopeful for another chance to clinch the enviable cup in the AFCON 2025, slated to hold in June next year. In the Christendom, the 40 days lengthened season is about to begin. This period precedes Easter, which commemorates the resurrection of Jesus. At the tail end of the Lent, the last Friday to be precise is Good Friday. This is to mark the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross at Golgotha. Observant Christians, mainly Orthodox and very few Pentecostal and white garments, are required to seek penance, focus on charity and fast. The season begins on Ash Wednesday, which this year falls on February 14, which is also Valentine's Day. So what will that mean for observant Christians? Well, those who want to celebrate this hot holiday with a romantic steak dinner might wish to go ahead while obligations for Ash Wednesday will also be in progress. The Lent concludes on Easter Sunday, which in 2024 is March 31st. This is in commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The following day, Easter Monday, is a remembrance of the appearance of Jesus at Galilee over 2,000 years ago. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has organized a two-day training for Governor's Spouse Forum on drug prevention, treatment, and care in Nigeria.
declaring the seminar open. Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Remi Tinubu, said the challenge of drug abuse and trafficking is not only for the security agencies and urged governor's wives in Nigeria to establish drug rehabilitation centers in their various states to assist in the fight against drug abuse in the country. Clevy News in Mifuno Korn was there and now tells us more. Declaring the workshop opened on behalf of the First Lady, wife of the Inspector General of Police, Elizabeth Epuetoko, urged governor's wives in Nigeria to take the training seriously, noting that it is through advocacy that they can ensure prevention, care and treatment for victims of drug abuse in their respective states. Similarly, Chairperson of the Governor's Wives Forum, Ulu Folake Abdurazak, on behalf of the association, declared total support for the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, in its ongoing war against abuse and trafficking of illicit drugs. We must challenge the stigma surrounding addiction and cultivate a culture of empathy and solidarity towards those battling substance use disorders. As mothers, we understand the profound impact that drug abuse can have on our children's lives. Therefore, it is incumbent upon us to protect, nurture, and guide them towards a future free from the shackle of addiction. Recall that in 2022, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and Nigeria Governor's Spouses Forum held a similar workshop which greatly helped First Ladies and focal persons from the states in their work in helping addicts and strengthening the work of rehabilitation centers. It is our belief that the new techniques shared here today will be useful to the older first ladies and the newer first ladies will find these tools helpful in working on drug abuse in their states. Excellencies, distinguished guests, today's event will no doubt improve our capacity and interventions in combating the menace of drug abuse in our respective states, it is in this light that I enjoin us all to stay attentive and deeply engage in the sessions that would follow. Chairman, Chief Executive of NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa, in his opening remarks said, drug prevention remains the agency's primary responsibility and is the need for a collective effort in educating the communities, particularly the youth, about the dangers of substance abuse. At the state levels, the NDLEA boss reiterated that there is no greater partners and advocates than Nigeria's first ladies as their influence is needed to mainstream treatment for drug addiction in society. Hence, I am compelled to renew the call to governor's spouses to please mobilize and engage stakeholders in your states to support prevention actions. Prevention remains our primary defense. In this vein, we must work tirelessly to educate our communities, particularly our youths, about the dangers of substance abuse and equip them with the skills and knowledge to make informed decisions. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fakwemi, UN, EU country representatives and other stakeholders, while bleaching their support in the fight against drug abuse in Nigeria, also called for a collaborative effort of everyone. Equally important is our commitment to expanding access to evidence-based treatment and rehabilitation services for those struggling with absence, substance use disorders. We must ensure that individuals seeking help receive the support and care they need free from stigma or discrimination. So we need to move basically from a concept where we have treatment centers, maybe at state capital, maybe at senatorial district, to much closer move those services to the people actually um, affected by drug abuse. And that is not only those ones that are um, using drugs, but also their families and their friends. When drug use is whispered through society, the needs for drug addicted men and women and children might be different. So it is very important to ensure gender sensitive treatment. The European Union will remain strong in fighting illicit drugs and in supporting your efforts. Our focus must therefore be on proactive measures 
including education, community outreach, and policy initiatives to deter substance abuse. Now regarding support, we are all in this together. If you are fighting the good fight against drugs, thank you, and needing a helping hand, we in the Federal Ministry of Education are there for you every step of the way. The two days training and seminal approach is aimed at tackling illicit drug crisis at the state levels. Imefon Okun, reporting for Clevy News. The ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, again suffered another setback as three local government chairmen defected to the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, in Kano State. The decampees include Honorable Ado Tambai Kwa, chairman of Dawakin Topa Local Council, the immediate constituency of acting national chairman of APC, Dr. Abdullahi Umar Ganduji. Honorable Kwa dumped APC to NNPP along his deputy, Honorable Galba Yahaya, and other councillors from Ganduji's home council. Similarly, the APC gubernatorial candidate in the 2023 general elections, Nasir Yusuf Gawuna, also lost a strong loyalist and chairman of his Nasarawa Local Government Council, Honorable Awalu Lawan Aramposu, to NNPP. Honorable Mudasiru Aliu, member of APC and chairman of Garum Malam Local Government Council, also crossed carpeted to NNPP. Receiving the decampees and their mass supporters at the Coronation Hall, Government House on Saturday, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf applauded the ingenuity of the former APC members to join the NNPP. Governor Yusuf, who assured the decampees of fairness and equal treatment in their new party, stressed that NNPP would be magnanimous enough to accommodate the entire APC members to serve humanity. The governor reiterated the government commitment to enhance social and economic development through massive investment of resources in the areas of education, health, agriculture, water resources, and human empowerment. According to Governor Yusuf, we are lucky that some of you have recognized the pattern of our leadership and decided to join hands with us on a mission to make Kano great. You are highly welcome home. The defection of APC members to NNPP is coming barely two weeks after the national chairman of the party and immediate past governor, Ganduji, extended an open letter inviting the NNPP leadership to the ruling party. The intrigue, although thoroughly calculated to win the heart of the Kwakwasia movement ahead of 2027 presidential ambition, only thought out after Governor Yusuf secured his mandate at the Supreme Court. Still in Kanu State, the Emir of Kano, Alhaji Aminu Adobayero, this Monday told Nigeria's First Lady, Oluremi Tinubu, to inform her husband, President Bola Tinubu, about the unprecedented hardship in the country. The Emir, who spoke through an interpreter during the visit of Mrs. Tinubu to the state, also asked the president to urgently address the issue of insecurity across the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. Though the emir admitted that Tinubu inherited the situation, he said the horrific decline in the standard of living under his administration is alarming and deserves urgent attention. The emir also said the issues of insecurity is another serious problem Nigerians are facing. He therefore advised strongly that something more serious be done to take care of the threats. Speaking on the relocation of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and some departments of the Central Bank of Nigeria to Lagos, he urged the federal government to come out clean on the matter and talk to Nigerians in the language they would understand. On the other hand, he commended Mrs. Tinubu for her care for the well-being of the Nigerian children and advised on the need to actualize her pet program under the Renewed Hope Agenda to accommodate the less privileged in the society. Away from Kano, the senator representing Edo North, Adams Oshomole, says Nigerians are currently suffering from what he described as reckless policies of former President Muhammad Buhari. He recalled that he protested against some of the policies that he said were designed to dehumanize the population that was already in pain. 
He stated this while speaking on a sister television station on Sunday. He said, my first loyalty is to Nigeria. At some point before the last president left office, I lamented loudly what I saw as reckless policies that were designed to dehumanize the population that was already in pain. You can follow up on latest events and happenings around you via our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Clearview News Desk or via our handle on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Clearview Online. Thank you.